In this example, what we'd like to do is come up with a new diet plan. The idea is that uh, if we use as much mechanical energy as the chemical energy that we eat, then the net gain of energy in our body is zero, we should lose weight. Uh, so the question is, if I consume, say, 1,500 or 2,000 calories uh, per day, how much mechanical energy would that be equivalent to? So let's try to find out. Um, there are some energy conversion factors in your book in the front inside page. My book is <laughs> torn apart. I've been using it for quite a while now. It's time to get a new one, but it's kind of like an old shoe. It fits well. Uh, in any case, uh, if you look up the number of calories uh, in the uh, energy conversion section, to convert it to some other unit, you find this conversion factor. One calorie equals 4.184 joules. Now there's a couple different calorie conversions and we're not sure yet which one to use. So let's just assume that this is the right one and we'll see if our answer makes sense. So if I consume, let's say 2,000 calories per day, then I would need to multiply that by 4.184 joules per one calorie to get rid of the calories and go to joules. So if I consume this many calories a day, how many flights of stuff, for example, do I need to, to climb up? How much should I change the potential energy of my body in order to offset all of the calories that I've eaten today? Now, obviously I lose weight pretty quickly because there's a lot of other calories required for the function of your body, for your brain, your breathing, your respiration, for your, uh, you know, just housekeeping stuff, essentially. Um, so this would be a pretty good weight loss plan, I think. So let's find out how many flights of stairs I've got to climb every day, or essentially how much height I have to accomplish every day in order to burn all 2,000 of these calories. Now let's see, you know from physics that potential energy is mgh. In other words, uh, if I were to raise a mass in the gravity field a certain height h, it would take a certain amount of energy. This is just the product of those three terms. So I can easily calculate um, how much energy I expend by moving up in the gravity field. Now, the mass of my body, I'll have to convert to um, uh, metric units. M my mass is probably about 180 pounds right now. So let's um, say 180 pounds mass. I want to convert that to kilograms. So let's look for a mass conversion. And it looks like a kilogram is 2.2046 or so pounds mass. So we'll divide by about two or so. I'm going to round the number off because I don't know my exact weight right now. And we just need an estimate anyway. 2.2046, uh, 81. Let's just say this is about 80 kilograms. I'll make myself a little lighter. <laughs> okay, cool. if only we're that easy. Okay, so 80 kilograms is my mass. The acceleration of gravity is uh, 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, and then the height is the question. It's how far up do I need to, to take my body in order to burn all the calories. So essentially what I'm saying is I, I want to set chemical energy equal to potential energy. So I want to use enough potential energy to consume all the chemical energy that I've eaten in calories and food, candy or whatever it is that I'm eating. And the only question really is how high do I need to go to consume all this? Well, so essentially what I need to do is set this product equal to this product. Okay. So 2,000 times 4.184. I usually like to plug in um, numbers at the end and just work in symbols, but for the sake of this example, uh, since I've started in, in numbers, I'll go ahead and continue that way. So 4.184, uh, let's see, looks like this is uh, 8,368 joules or 8.37 or so kilojoules. And that I need to set equal to the mass, which is 80 kilograms. Acceleration of gravity, 9.8, let's go ahead and add the 1 meters per second squared. And the, the um, height is the unknown, h. So if I rearrange and solve for the height, h, 
And what I've got is 8,368. Now a joule, what is a joule? Well, a joule uh, is a measure, measure of energy, and it's just force times distance. That's work or, or energy. So force times distance in the metric system would be newtons multiplied by meters. So this is newton meters. Now, torque has units of newton meters as well, but it's, it's a different dimension. But anyway, so there's the uh, chemical energy that I've eaten in a day, let's say. And I'll divide that then by my mass and the acceleration of gravity. So 80 kilograms, 9.81 meters per second squared. Let's try and figure out what units we'll end up with here. Hopefully it'll be meters. Should be. Let's find out. Well, what is a newton? A newton is just a kilogram meter per second squared. So the kilograms cancel nicely. The meters per second squared cancel nicely. And I'm, I'm sure enough left with meters. So we're almost there. Let's try this. Divided by 80 divided by 9.81 equals 10.7 or so meters. Does that make sense? Now, how high is 10 meters? That's about 30 feet or so. Are you saying that all I have to do is climb a couple flights of stairs every day and I'll burn all of the food that I eat? Obviously, that can't be right. So what happened? Well, remember, when we first started off the problem, we said, well, there's all these different calorie conversions. We weren't sure which one to use. Well, if you look on the side of a, a package of food and it tells you how many calories one serving is, it's telling you kilocalories. It's not... Uh, uh, it's not telling you cat calories with a lowercase c, it's calories with an uppercase c. I'm sorry, not kilocalories, but just um, uppercase c calories. And that's actually 4.18 kilojoules, not just joules. So with a capital C, this would be kilojoules. Basically all that does is that multiplies left-hand side by 1,000. So if this were kilojoules, now we have kilonewton meters, and basically what we need to do is multiply this by 1,000. So 1,000, let's say 0.123, so 0, 0, there we go. So I need to climb 10,700 meters. Now, here in the United States, we're probably not well versed in lengths. So let's find out how high that is in, uh, we could do feet or we could do miles. Uh, let's just go with feet, and then we'll convert it to miles. So, let's see, a foot is 0 .3048 meters. So one foot is 0 0.3048 meters. So when you perform the conversion, let's see. Divided by 0 .3048. You get 35,105 feet. So you have to climb pretty high in the sky. Let's divide that by 5280. Go to miles. You'd only have to climb 6.65 or so miles up into the air in order to uh, burn all the calories that you eat in one day if you eat 2,000 calories. Obviously, that's impractical, it's not going to work. Could convert that to stories, but uh, that's another story, I guess, for a bad joke. All right. So why couldn't we just walk 6.6 .6 miles? Would, would that work? Would that give us the same calorie burning potential? No, it wouldn't, because you're not moving against a force that's as large in the horizontal direction as if you move in the vertical direction. If you move up in the vertical direction, you're moving against gravity. You move horizontally, maybe you have a wind load or scuffing your feet on the ground, but there's really just not that much force. So the, uh, uh, the amount of energy you expend in the forward would be nowhere near as much as you expend uh, raising your mass in the air. And you can determine there, you can, you can uh, realize this by taking a walk down the street for a mile or so and then climb two or three sets of stairs. You'll be out of breath if you're not in good shape by the time you've crested the third uh, set of stairs or so to the third story, or as you walk a mile or so, and you'll probably be fine. You wouldn't be out of breath at all. So hopefully this helps and makes some sense.